Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do something that you guys have been asking me to do for a while. We are going to over dye a variegated skein of 100% cotton yarn. This is Knit Picks Dishy and this yarn has white and various colors of gray and I thought it would be fun to over dye this with a dip dyed gradient so that way we have multiple, multiple layers of color in the finished yarn. Dishy is 100% cotton and it is a worsted weight yarn. Now, since this yarn is 100% cotton, we can't use food coloring or jacquard acid dyes. Those types of dyes work best on protein-based fibers and cotton is a cellulose fiber, so we need to use a different type of dye. Therefore, I am going to use some RIT liquid dyes today to over dye this cotton yarn. I have heard some people mention that they've had some issues with RIT and cotton items that they've dyed, but I am still choosing to use it today because it is indicated to, as a dye to use with cotton. So I thought that we would see how well and what kind of gradient we get if we were to dip dye this yarn into some writ color. However, before we begin, I need to wind this into a hank on my Knitting Naughty. We are going to over dye our yarn with navy blue dye. And I picked this color since it is a deep color because I was curious how much of the grays we will be able to see through after we are done with our dip dyeing. While I am filming this Dye Pot PS episode, I am also filming an experiment where I want to see if this RIT Color Stay Fixative helps the RIT dye stay on cotton fibers through multiple washes. So even though I don't know the result yet, I am planning to fix this yarn with the Color Stay Fixative just as a precautionary measure. I am pre-soaking the yarn in plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. In my dedicated dye pot, I have just added 16 cups of water, which is one gallon. And to this, I am gonna add a third of a cup of just salt. Um, I don't have any specific dyer salt, so I am just using table salt. I believe that the directions say to use a cup of salt and three gallons of water. So that's why I decided to use a third of a cup of salt in one gallon today. And so right now, um, I'm gonna let this start getting heated up and I will add the dye right before we get ready to dip dye. I am going to reduce the heat a tiny amount and now, oh, first I should shake up the dye. And then I am going to add a third of a cup, which is about 80 milliliters of this navy dye to the dye bath. Oh, that's a lot of color. And as I stir this up and we come back to temp, I'd like to take this time to give a shout out to Marie Hahn and the other Fiber patrons. You can see some of their names go across the screen right now. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you'd like to see or hear your name in this list in future months, check out the Chemnitz Patreon and become a patron. You can find a link in the video description. I squeezed out a lot of the water from our pre-soaked fiber. And now, let's get dip dyeing. I am absolutely not expecting to exhaust the dye by any stretch. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of dye in here, but I'm hoping that we can achieve um, some cool color. And, whoa. So I'm just gonna slowly dip in and out and slowly, slowly add a little more color. Now I need to keep in mind that a lot of color will rinse out 
um, after the fact. Um, and, you know, we're not applying a ton of heat because I'm dip dyeing and I don't think I'm going to leave this necessarily in the pot for very long because, I mean, look at the depth of the color from just a little bit. But I'm really curious if we will get any hint from these original grays in the yarn. Yeah, I mean, even on the inside of the skein, we're seeing a lot of color. Um, okay, I am going to now sort of dip in and wiggle the tip and carefully uh, move and wiggle. All right, and I am now going to let this drip, but I am removing this from the pot. I actually have a better container. Um, kind of stick you in there for a minute. Okay. So right now, oh, you can see a bit of a gradient, but I don't see very much of the original gray at all. But I'm going to let this cool off to the side, um, and then once it's cooled, we will rinse out all of the... And once our yarn has cooled, we will rinse out the excess dye, at least a couple rinses, and then we will soak it in that color fixative um, for 20 minutes to see if that'll help prevent some additional bleeding, and then we will rinse the yarn more, I guess. <laughs> okay, our yarn has cooled off, and I am now going to add it into, ooh, that looks purple coming off, the rinse water. Because I know that there is some extra dye that we should rinse out, but actually, that is not nearly as much as I had expected. Um, wow. You know, here I was hoping to do a dip side gradient, but this, this, oh, this would soak up so much dye so quickly. I was really expecting things to get a lot paler as, as we washed it. And I mean, there is definitely some bleeding, but Wow. Now, I mean, I can see some paler tones in one end, in the lighter end, but man, I guess this is one that we're really going to have to see once it, once it dries, if we can even tell that we dip dyed this, um, with the exception of a few small pieces. And I don't know if we're going to even see much hint of the original sort of gray tones in here. Maybe I just used way, way, way too much dye. But, if anything, it's kind of cool if you can, huh, it's hard to see because there's some sunlight coming in. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Who knows? All right, I am, I think I'm gonna rinse this one more time. I mean, we still have some color coming out, obviously, but I'm also going to start cranking up the temperature of my rinse water to prepare to use this color fixative. Because you're supposed to use it in hot water. Actually, okay, let's I'm gonna squeeze out water from this right now. So I know water will bleed out as I am doing this. I am now filling this basin with hot water. That way I can add this fixative. Now it says to use four tablespoons of the Rick dye and three gallons of hot water. Um, but I'm gonna try, I think that this will probably be around one gallon in here. So I'm going to add two tablespoons. Two 
two tablespoons of the disexative. Let's stir this up. And now I am going to add our yarn. And I am expecting to see some bleeding in this step. Um, it should not be come as a surprise at all given that there was still some bleeding in the yarn um, when we first started. But I am now gonna leave that in this bath for 20 minutes and I will come and stir it occasionally with my da -da -da, handy tongs. So we will see both how dark the water gets throughout. I figured it was prudent to add this color stay step to this experiment, given that I am also currently testing whether or not this color fixative really makes a difference. Um, I don't think it'll harm anything to use the color fixative, and if it has a, a real benefit on the longevity of the washability of the dye, then I don't want to be sad that I didn't use it. I'm sorry about the glare, you guys. Um, but anyway, the 20 minutes are up, and the good news is that this dye pot is still warm from, from the, dye, the water is still warm, so that means that the hot water from the tap lasts well. And I mean, right now this almost looks black, but the instructions say to now continue rinsing with cool water. And I still, oh, funny, I still expect to see some color bleeding, um, just because we have not yet finished rinsing. But actually, that's not so bad. Uh, I have no idea what is in the fixative, and as far as I can tell, I did not see any active ingredients on it. So I sort of here did a combination of the stove top and spray method and that I let the, I let the yarn soak in some hot water with this color fixative. I did not use the color fixative on the stove top in a pot that was continue, continuously heated. Um, but it says to rinse in cold water and dry and to clean the container with hot water and a cleanser. So, but man, this actually, it didn't do nothing. There is a method here for something that you don't want to submerge. So you, it also says that you can spray fabric with, um, with an even layer of the fixative and then rinse and wash. But this is pretty good. I'm now gonna add a little bit of, well, I guess a lot of it, of clear dish soap to this rinse just to help dislodge anything else that could be there. Okay, now I see some color coming out. The water is still cool, but I am going to rinse this until, you know, the water, the rinse water runs clear, and then we will hang up our cotton yarn to dry so we can see if we actually have a gradient or not. Here is the finished dry yarn. We absolutely have a gradient from a very deep saturated navy to a sort of paler dusty blue gray. The gradient is subtler than I imagined because I did not expect the red liquid dye to stick to the yarn as quickly as it did. I knew I was adding a lot of dye to the pot but I guess I took figured that it would take some heat to really absorb to the yarn and that we would end up rinsing out a lot more of the dye than we did. Nevertheless, this is a really, really pretty color. We over dyed a variegated yarn that was white with multiple shades of sort of pale and medium grays. And you, if you look closely, you can sort of tell that we started with a variegated base. Within the, even the darker sections, you can see that there are some deeper dark sections and some lighter ones. There are some variations of the tone within this yarn. So even though the, the colors were paler to begin with and we over dyed with a lot of dye, I think that there is some 
really nice almost depth to the yarn that we get because we started with this variegated base. But as I said, these differences are really, really subtle. And I don't think you would even necessarily pick up on them at all if you hadn't seen the yarn that we started out for the dyeing project. Over here you can really see some of the shades of color from the original grays coming through. And again, sort of here in the medium tones. It's something that's a little hard to pick up on camera, but I think that as you're knitting with this yarn, you will see all of these multiple shades of navy, which isn't really something that I think about a lot, but you will see all these, these colors come through when you turn this yarn into fabric. And I think that even though this isn't necessarily what I went out to do, I sort of wanted a little more of an extreme gradient and I was hoping to get a paler color at one end. We found that the Rit Liquid dyes struck extremely quickly and also that we clearly did not need to leave the yarn in the dye bath for 20 minutes or anywhere near that to get a really vibrant saturated color. And so this shows just another way that we can use these Rit dyes and use them quickly to dye some cotton yarns and other cellulose fibers. As for the Rit Color Stay Dye Fixative, is it worth using it? I have a whole other video that is dedicated to that question, but to summarize it, I don't think you need to run out and buy that and use that second step on your yarn. It might help with some of the bleeding when you're washing, but I have not found that it leads to um, a real difference in the overall final color. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. Patrons can get early access to a new dyeing video every month, exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks, and you can even get to vote in polls to help choose the content and the focus of a new dyeing video. Thank you so much for watching.